sticking your neck out. Shall we start? <laughs> um, let's go to the Telegraph. Right hand column. Corbyn defied by dozens of his MPs on deficit. Dozens, it's, 21. It's not it. exactly, it's not exactly <laughs> dozens, is it? However, it was, it, I, I actually thought it would be a little bit more than that. I mean, this is very damaging for him, I think. It, it's, it's more mag, uh, damaging for John McDonnell, I think. Um, you know, as it was pointed out by one MP today, he said, you know, if he, McDonald said politics is about learning, and I learned and I made a mistake, and I was, and one MP said today, well, you don't learn you don't, you don't make an announcement about your party, then learn and then reverse the announcement because it makes you and the party look incredibly stupid. And this does make them look stupid, I think. You know, the Labour Party is Her Majesty's opposition and as such is meant to be there to, to hold the government to account in Parliament. And how can they... They can only do that if they're credible. And, and this kind of stuff makes them not credible. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to... The Tor there has to be a credible opposition for the Tories because if, if or they'll want to mock, they have to have someone that can hold them to account, and this is not going to happen. I can't, the only thing I would say is that this is kind of Westminster wonkishness, all of this, because this is not a meaningful debate, because uh, Osborne is proposing a fiscal charter that is not binding in any way. It certainly can't bind mm. the next government, because no, nothing passed in Parliament is, can, can bind the next Parliament. So Corbyn's saying we want to run a surplus. Macdonald said two weeks ago, yeah, it's probably a good idea to show that we're not deficit deniers, so we kind of agree with it. And then he said subsequently in the last couple of days or the last day, oh, actually, I'm going to, to, uh, to, to vote against this because I've spoken to the people in Redcar and I've had some professional advice, unspecified what that might be, and actually I think it probably isn't a good idea. He hadn't taken it to, before, to but there you go. A, a mm. But then you're in this, this kind of absurd situation where 20-odd Labour MPs are abstaining, what does that yeah. mean? But the, but the, what, what, the, what, what does any of this mean outside the, of Westminster? It's a, it's, a, it's a proposal by the government that has but it isn't, no binding power. The story power. isn't about the fiscal yeah. policy at all, is it? This is about the rebellion against the Labour Party and what's happening within the Labour Party and the disintegration mm. of the party itself. You know, you have, you have MPs coming out of meetings saying this is ridiculous, just saying, you know, we, we can't go on like this. So it's not about the fiscal mm. policy at all. It's about yeah. what's and that's, happening And to that's the why Labour the commentary party. underneath this has been this yeah. was a, set, a trap set by George Osborne that if you don't sign up to this, your deficit de 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 uh, yes. denies. And if you do, I you totally, bind yourself to I the totally austerity, get, therefore you're not an anti-austerity. I, I yes. totally get that. I just think that it's a classic example of the reverse end of the telescope thinking of people in Westminster. Oh, it's a political trap set but by it, George Osborne and McDonald's blundered into it. Has he not blundered into it? And actually, there is a kind of underlying point here is who actually cares oh, if George Osborne has outsmarted through some slightly recondite parliamentary can't, you posturing. You can't say who cares because what? actually proper, because <laughs> proper Labour voters care. They care about what's happening to the party. They don't want this kind of fighting because what they want in the end is for the government, is for the Labour Party to win the election. What they might so care, for them it matters. You can't but what they say might care matter. about is that Macdonald has in the end, rightly or wrongly, articulated a point of principle which is they feel that their best position is to be anti-austerity and it comes down to a simple question is whether George Osborne is effectively saying, we believe by the end of Parliament we should be running a surplus. And what Macdonald is kind of saying is, but maybe, maybe not, but the route to get there cannot but involve... you're the only one getting hung up on the detail of what this yes. is actually about. Yes. Well, I'm just, yes. I'm just, what Carol is saying, that you've had the, the anthem to sing or not to sing. Yes. You now get white well, tie well, to wear or not to wear. Yeah. And also you get Privy well, Council to kneel yeah, or well, not well, to well, kneel. Well, at what well, point is it going to be at, about Labour politics? Well, it's all about genuine opposition. Forgive me for giving... Well, forgive me for giving them the... Courtesy of watching them spend the last four hours debating something in our parliament and trying to pretend oh, that actually it's I meaningful. Mean, no. I'm just saying that all I'm saying no, is if, they, if, if I it's don't meaningful, think then let's is talk pretending about. pretending it's meaningful. We know what it's all about. And, and the, the, the and next story we, we were going to talk about was him, you know, challenge, uh, talk, trying to get in front of Chinese officials at the state banquet. Um, to, and and it's yet again. Well, to be honest, there's nothing wrong with it, actually, because no. the one thing that I don't much care for Corbyn, but actually he should be challenged in China. On its human rights, but record. even on a, but, even at a state occasion, yes, yeah, well, even no, at that but that's point. the point because now that now that it's been made public, what he's going to do? How far do you think he's going to be mm. sat for all the delegates <laughs> and the Chinese president? Mm. You've seen how long those tables are. He'll be nearly in the kitchen. Yeah, I would he say he won't get close to them. Is that Corbyn has got to use his? The one thing about Corbyn is he is a genuinely idealistic person, and he was the first to talk about Saudi Arabia and the obscene case of a 17-year-old guy being beheaded yeah. and crucified for effectively opposing the government. He's objecting to Chinese human rights, while well, George Osborne, because he has to be pragmatic, goes off to China and beats the drum for British industry. 
there has got to be a use of Jeremy Corbyn. And if, if, to be honest, that use is confining himself to making human rights arguments, talking about abuses in countries, then that's not a bad thing for him to be doing. All if he wants this to is about whether he's fit to be leader of, of Her Majesty's opposition. I would say that. And I think what's coming out is that maybe he isn't, and maybe John Macdonald isn't fit to be Chancellor. I would say Shadow that that argument is well and truly over. He clearly by any standards, is not the right person to lead the Labour Party as a pragmatic, credible opposition. But some Labour Party of people want oh, yeah. him out. I'm sure and, that, I'm, and that's I'm, what this I'm, is all about. I'm sure they do. But all I'm saying is that if he is going to have a use while he's doing this and while he's standing up in Prime Minister's questions and, and reading out questions from people who've written to him and, and not really challenging the Prime Minister, if we're going to have the facade of that happening every week where today he stands up and says Mark from Middlesex says that this isn't a very good idea is it Prime Minister and David Cameron who's been batting this sort of thing away since he was presumably just out of swaddling way, stands there doesn't get challenged if that's what we're going to have that's fine but if Corbyn is going to stand up and yeah, say you know what Saudi Arabia is a barbaric he, medieval country he, we shouldn't be pandering to them if he's going to stand up and yeah, say Steve, China could, has problems then that's all to the good for him. Steve you could argue that he's already had one success is that it looks like the the justice team here in the UK is pulling out of this yes. contract to provide prison yes. services in Saudi What's Arabia. The value of that, that was some but to six be, million. Right, and, and so, there, there yes. is a defence contract worth four and a half billion that is going. So through. you say chicken feed? I'm, I'm saying it's not terrible in and of itself. I mean, let's not build it up too far. But no, he's quite right. He's got principles, and those principles are sometimes clearly going but to be correct. Be fair, and he's right. To I, th I don't think them. I don't think Michael Gove pulled that deal um, because Jeremy Corbyn said he probably should. I don't think that's why he did it. I think you know everyone is saying that, that Michael Gove pulled that deal on his own moral I'm sure that's objections, I'm, I'm and sure they were saying he was true. probably sure wrong to do However, I think he was incredibly right to do that. And even Cameron overruled Philip Hammond, the Foreign Secretary, who so, opposed that. Yeah. So, 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 if we take your argument to the nth degree, he is not the right man to, to lead the Labour Party. I, what truly, is the Labour Party going to do about it, well, and I when is it going to? I do think it? this. I think what the Labour Party are going to do about it is happening, and it's, it's one of the things they're going to do about it happen tonight. They're going to abstain from big votes, and they're going to make him look like a. a not a credible leader yeah. by its and abstaining. If you go back to the, the, the Telegraph article, they're beginning to say, it look, you know, the Labour's reversal on its policy on Syria, bombing yes. Syria, for example, is that Jeremy Corbyn has accepted the majority view of the shadow cabinet rather than his own personal and, beliefs. And, you know, Corbyn will so do maybe this. He will, he will, maybe he will change Corbyn, it. Corbyn to. will have to backpedal on almost everything he believes in if he's to stay Labour leader. And that in itself will discredit mm. him. He's okay. already started doing right. it. Right. Should we move on to other matters? We've got well, lots yeah, of I'm people. quite enjoying being the position of being the one person <laughs> out of you, you two. It's you don't it, like me having defending a go at Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> it's, quite a, it's quite a refreshing thing. moment. We're just raising the question. We might yeah. have another one in a minute uh, now. Steady. <laughs> uh, divorce. Divorce. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting case that's, uh, that's been confirmed now, which effectively says that men in divorce cases have to be honest about the scale of their assets, and women who have been divorced are entitled to challenge them to say, have you actually been yes. fully honest? And in the event that they've been proven that they didn't reveal all of their assets, the cases can be reviewed and a greater distribution of money and property and whatever can then take place. You see, I, I, I sort of agree with this in principle, but it's a tough one because I'm not a great believer in a woman who's been married to a millionaire for a few years. It, when she says, I have to live in a five million pound mansion in Kensington or I have to have seven holidays yeah. a year because that's what I'm used to, I totally disagree with that. Mm. Um, if she wants all, thing, all those things, she should go out and get a job and earn yeah. them as well. However, I do ag agree with the fact that if, if a bloke lies about what he's worth yeah. and, and that couple have got a family together and you know, they've brought up children together and, and, and the woman may have helped him run his business by making herself available to run the house and all the rest of it, yes. She should be made aware of what he's worth. It's and, not fair. And but do you think, on the principal point, then, that women are entitled to fifty percent? Not not all, not necessarily always. But the but, end result but, of that sometimes is that the, the man, the dad, often is in some bedsit down the road while the four bedroom family house has been kept by the woman and yes, the three kids. Yes. So yeah. where's the fairness there? Well, that, it's well, not fair. But you know, this. Just but this, does, this that doesn't rectify this problem at all. I think if you accept that there is a division of spoils, as it were, you also have to accept surely the principle that that division of spoils should be based on an honest account of what the. But it's never fifty percent either. That's an American law. It's not the law here. A woman wouldn't necessarily get fifty percent anyway. And this just doesn't happen with you know men v women. This happens with men too. You know. There's 
there's, there's rumors that Guy Ritchie got something like 75 million quid from Madonna. So it happens the other way around with rich women and, and, and guys. And it's a slightly misleading picture of these women who are all monstrously wealthy and look mm. very jolly about You're it. Pointing I mean, to the, the Daily Mail. Well, well one, the, of them, no, the, one of them got 10 million quid, the other one got 250,000. But the main lesson in divorce, generally speaking, is it tends to have ugly effects for, for everybody because, like yeah. you say, you, can, you, you build a life together mm. and not just the emotional tearing that happens, is that life is constituted of you both contributing yes. when you try and split Would that into two. Would it help if there were civil partnerships for heterosexual couples? Well, well, I, I have no idea, but... Uh... Well, I don't understand that argument, really. I mean, I think the argument should be that there's got to be an equitable way of deintegrating a couple in a way that doesn't leave the man living in it. Yeah, the conscious, the conscious, yes. the conscious, the conscious uncoupling, uncoupling. The conscious uncoupling of, no, of divorce. He, the asset should be declared and the judge should make the decision about, you know, who gets what. It's just, it shouldn't be hidden, basically. Yeah. Uh, lots more still to come, including uh, inside the newspapers. Has a Strictly judge been strictly or slightly out of step? Oh, good, yeah, good pun. Back in a minute. <laughs> Hello there, welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me this evening, the Sunday Mirror columnist Carol Malone and the Sun's managing editor Stig Abel. Welcome back to both of you. Uh, let's go to the Daily Mail, shall we, which is uh, a story reiterated in many of the front pages for tomorrow, the damning of NHS hospitals. This is a report by the Care Quality Commission, which says what? It's a shocking report, really, it's because shocking. in the aftermath of mid-staffs, the one mm. thing that I think we all believed was that the record on safety was being mm. fixed. And we all know about the, the economic pressures on the NHS and almost on a daily basis, certainly on a weekly basis, that's writ large. There's going to be a deficit this year of two billion quid uh, for English NHS hospitals. There is no money. It's massively overstretched. But the one thing I think that we wanted to believe was that post mid-staffs there would be a rise in caring about safety. I'm sure people individually do care about it, but what this demonstrates is that 74, you know, three quarters mm. of NHS hospitals are I'm unsafe. Safe. That is an astonishingly mm. high figure uh, after a period of years in which uh, care scandals have happened. Mm. And everyone has said efforts are being oh, redoubled to fix What is them. also astonishing, I think, is that you know every people keep on saying you know we have the best NHS in the world. Well, actually, we don't. You know, the, the nurses and midwifery council last week put out a diktat now that nurses and midwives are going to be checked to see if they're they're fit for purpose, basically, for the job. I mean, what a terrible situation that is. That a nurse has to be checked out to see if she's caring and compassionate enough. She should be by her very nature. That's that's what nurses exist for. And while we have some fantastic nurses, we clearly have a lot who aren't fantastic and and the same applies for doctors and we keep on hearing that doctors are fed up with the NHS and they're fed up with the, the hours and they, they want to go to different countries but this shows that people just aren't doing their jobs properly does it or, or simply that the financial well, squeeze is really now well, they, they, is, it, is it just that well they, they would they would argue I mean it's an, they would argue that the strain on nursing numbers is so is so intense the strain on general people coming in A and E, we're saying people but left in makeshift huts. They, there is not enough time mm. to give people proper care. The argument you're making is is whatever time is available being used. You properly. give proper care. You know that when when someone is sick and vulnerable in hospital, what they need is someone to hold yeah. their hand for, for even if it's for one minute, mm. hold your hand and be caring and But be they're talking about a desperate shortage of nurses here, just the point where yeah. obviously they're trying to put a squeeze on migrants coming to this country which may well affect the NHS, but also because of the financial constraints on hospitals. Now, maybe they simply can't employ well, enough the, 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 to, the, to deal with the number the of patients. The position we're going to be in for the next 10, 20 years is unless any steps is taken to reimagine what the NHS can be and how it's funded, this is a story that's going to endlessly recycle itself. And I mean, you do these pay, pay per views every day. How many times do you do a story which effectively says the NHS has no money, care has know, declined, standards of standards have declined, worries about mm. doctors, worries about nurses? It is a tsunami of negativity that is unstoppable. We can't put it all down to cuts. It's not all down to cuts. I mean, the story this week came out, wasn't it? The, the report came out that an NHS whistleblower was named by his shameless bosses. The professor had revealed that dozens of patients were needlessly put through the agony of chemotherapy. Therapy. Now that's not to do with cuts. That's to do with bad care, and we hear about bad no, it's care. It's to do with covering your back in case there's a follow-up because that patient well, did need chemotherapy. No, they didn't need as much as they had, though. They were put through more chemotherapy than they should have had um, because this. Do not the each patient would prefer to have more and know their 
No, they cured no, 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 not when they didn't need it, and not when it was agony for them and they were put through needless agony. That's what this report said. The pressure is very hard to quantify. I think I, I don't understand what you're saying, Carol. But there's also this argument of the pressure, the the intense pressure on the services, the intense pressure, and, and the over management, the over uh, the over bureaucracy that affects it means that well, each decision is now but a question of not only do you try and make the right decision, you're concerned about the attendant But uh, this is also the week that, 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 we, that we read, there was a story about NHS fat cats getting multi-million pound it payoffs. Is badly right. That is still happening. That's got to stop. Mm. If they didn't get those payoffs, there'd be more money for patient care. And who, who was supposed to be controlling these payoffs? We were told after the last NHS boss got fired, we were told that that wouldn't happen, that would be brought under control, mm. and it hasn't been. So is the truth, basically, it needs more money put in? It's a bit of you, well, the, the point I'm trying to get to is that the, the, the previous Conservative government, back pre-Blair, we were seeing people treated in hospital corridors, yes. and that's why the Labour Party, when it came in, put lots more money into the NHS. The, is there a danger that we might go back well, to that under, well, under a Conservative government? I think we're already back. You know, the, the Labour have said there's 24 hours to save the NHS, there's a week to save the NHS, there's yeah. uh, a but year the to save the NHS. The point is, you have to reimagine what can be achieved in a world where everyone is getting older, everyone is getting fatter, everyone is getting, uh, exactly everyone it. is going to be needing more treatment yes. for a longer period yeah. of time. You have to come up with a solution as to what the NHS should look mm. like, and that's a very brave, long-term political yeah. decision. And we have a political class who, for reasons of the political cycle, are not willing to you, make brave, long-term... It's only brave if you get people to start paying for it. You mean, well, like, tuition fees. Yeah, but we've got 30 seconds left. We haven't oh, done oh, anything. Fine. Right, right, what do you want right, to do right, right, right. Well, we've teased a story. Well, just do what whatever we've teased. What are we this oh, one? yes. Oh, yes. This is lovely. This is this is the mirror story. Lighten it's, up. So, Ola Jordan's <laughs> husband is um, uh, James Jordan is going mad about uh, Craig Revel. He's called, saying, accusing him of having double standards for criticising her doing a sexy Christmas calendar. I'm not entirely sure whether we can say what she is it, well, doing it's on a the calendar. Of it, yeah, it's a picture of it. She's pouring. Oh, she's, she's pouring she, milk. She's missed the mouth. She's, she's pouring, milk. Uh, pouring milk down. Yes. But uh, Craig Revel Hall's autobiography is called. All balls and glitter. And so it's should, about should, should he be the arbiter of taste? <laughs> is a legitimate question. But you have asked. to explain this a bit more. I'm a bit confused. Yes. Yes. All balls and glitter, and a lady trying to drink milk, but somehow yes. possibly to... promoting <laughs> something for herself. No? Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. And um, it... Carol, we've run out of time. I'm okay, I'll shut up. No, no, we will. We're, we're off to go. We're off to practice <laughs> drinking milk. Yeah, no, we're not. Stig and Carol, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Weather's next. <laughs> Well, still to come here on Sky News, we'll be seeing what's on the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers with the Sunday Mirror columnist, Carol Malone, and the Sun's managing editor, Stig Abel, including this story in the Daily Mail, the damning of NHS hospitals. More on their safety to come. Hello there, you're watching Sky News and the press preview. In the next half hour, we'll see what's making the newspaper headlines. With tonight, the Sunday Mirror columnist, Carol Malone, and the Sun's managing editor, Stig Abel. Good evening. What's all this raised eyebrows? <laughs> oh, no, we're just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just being polite, Anna. We just want to do, isn't no. it? It's like, yeah. Okay, right, I'll move on from you. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Front pages. So, an investigation in the FT has revealed the so-called Islamic State generates half a billion US dollars from oil reserves each year. The I reports Jeremy Corbyn is prepared to use a state dinner to confront Beijing officials about China's human rights record. Comments from EU President Jean-Claude Juncker suggesting Britain doesn't need the EU European Union are on the front of the Express. The Telegraph is leading with figures claiming three quarters of NHS hospitals have been rated as unsafe. The Mail also has that report, which it says reveals casualty cases had been left in makeshift huts outside some hospital emergency rooms. The Guardian leads on that NHS story too. It's pictured, it's picturing Pauline Kafferke, the Ebola nurse, in a critical condition at a London hospital. The government is preparing to retreat from its controversial tax on justice just six months after it was, it was introduced. That's in The Independent. The Times also has a picture of Pauline Kafferke, but it's leading with the approval of Britain's first new grammar school in 50 years. A French rail company has been accused of fueling Britain's immigration crisis by offering free train trips to refugees. That's the lead story for The Sun. Thousands of divorce cases could be returning to court after two women win a landmark legal battle to have their cases reviewed. That story is at the front page of the Metro. Gangs are earning up to £35,000 a week smuggling puppies into Britain. That's the lead for the Daily Mirror. And <laughs> Stig's favourite story, it says here, 
The star <laughs> claims a spook hunter has captured the image of a child ghost. Yes. Pretty and you believe that, absolutely, don't you? Anna believed it. It's I an believe. exclusive. It's an exclusive. It's a total, yes. And there you go. Yes. Look at that, that's terrifying. It looks like one of those Victorian photographs. It's almost as if they've totally made this up. I mean, she's green and pink. Is she? Oh, yeah. her teeth are. It's yeah. the first teeth 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 You want to see it again? <laughs> It's a funny old thing. It's a strange way to But they periodically do this to start. They periodically just do these mm. ghost kids. Because I mean, they, they sell well. But yes. they, well they do. The they, paper does, I mean. People well, want to believe Comparatively it. against itself, this is a relatively <laughs> uh, a good sale for them, yeah. Mm. Um, anyway, mad, though, isn't it? back to the mainstream news of the day, I suppose. Back to the real world. Yes, yes, well, <laughs> ghost Daily Telegraph. Figures. Um, uh, yes, this, this is... Corbyn. Yeah. This is this... Maybe not the real world. <laughs> yes, he was... Um, it was embarrassing for him today, for him and John McDonnell, um, because uh, 21 Labour MPs abstained from the vote, um, which was about... Um, was, was about Osborne's fiscal charter. He wanted to ensure Britain doesn't spend more than it earns. And, anyway, so they voted against it. And this is... It's not about this charter itself. It's not about the economy. This is about what is happening within the Labour Party, the infighting and the destruction of the Labour Party. Um, and I think a lot of Labour voters are to that. Corbyn has a lot of support, I know, but let, let's not forget that the people who voted for him to become leader represent 0.5 of the voting electorate, so it's not that many people. However, there will be lots of Labour voters at home tearing their hair out at what's happening to the party they love. You know, Labour is Her Majesty's opposition. It's responsible for holding the government to account in Parliament. And without a credible opposition, the Tories will be allowed to run amok. And we have to have a credible opposition. Um, and what's happening with what Macdonald this week did by changing his mind on, on the first saying he would first support the government, then he wouldn't support them. He's he's made the party look stupid and amateurish. It was stu it was a stupid and clumsy thing to do, and just because he admits it and says you know uh, it was a bit embarrassing, it doesn't make it okay. The party is in a mess, and it needs to be credible to to win an election, and currently it isn't. I don't ag I, I, I don't agree that Labour voters around the country are watching its performance on a vote for a meaningless fiscal charter that doesn't bind anyone to anything and the fact that dozens or actually nearly two dozen MPs abstain, Labour MPs abstain rather than voting against it is I think we're just in the height of, of Westminster wonkishness. I think Carol is absolutely right to say Labour have a problem with its leadership uh, with Corbyn coming in, how credible they are as an opposition. I just don't feel ultimately that a debate about Osborne saying we want to run a surplus by the end of this parliament and we want to believe that that should be best practice going forward, but it's not about something that. that's not binding. Uh, and Macdonald two weeks ago <coughs> said it was a good idea to show they weren't deficit, desire, uh, deficit deniers and has now changed his mind. I, I think it, it, it paints the broad narrative that you're talking about that Labour don't quite know what they're doing. But this notion that this is mm. uh, going to have people in the north of England, Labour key heartlands, going, oh, I can't believe John Macdonald has now but, said he's anti austerity. No, I, don't think that I think they'll be saying, that's... actually, a lot of the stuff he's said is, I don't want to be supporting a government that has tax credits, cutting tax credits. I don't want to be uh, uh, supporting a government that is willing to harm right, the poorest people right, in the country. And I, just right don't, about and, that. and I don't think anyone standing up who is supporting Labour, Labour heartlands are going to look at him and think anything other than, don't you see, I probably agree with it. When you have what Cameron is doing with tax credits, it's dead wrong. But, but what, what McDonald did this week by changing his mind, it takes, it takes the attention away from mm. the real criticisms about what the Tories are doing. You know, the tax Absolutely. Why, they're nowhere near running a budget surplus. Yes. They're nowhere near getting the deficit down. So it's not Nobody's about talking that. about that at all, are no. they? Well, no, and he's, and he's sought to do that. And so mm. uh, is he a proper shadow chance of the Exchequer? Absolutely not. He believes... For example, his hobby is fermenting an overthrow of capitalism. He's a non-capitalist uh, wannabe Chancellor of the Exchequer. He has had a, a track record of supporting the IRA in the same way that his leader has. His leader doesn't believe in uh, having an army. His leader doesn't believe in the nuclear deterrent under any so circumstances. So you're listing what everyone else in the country is thinking. They're thinking, my God, how much more can we take about these this, two people? But what actually McDonald has ended up getting to is a point of non-pragmatic principle. The great criticism of McDonald in this position is Osborne is saying, sure, Surely we have to live in a world where we don't borrow too much. Yes, Surely we have to sense. live in a world where we control don't spend our, our, our spending. You earn as a and actually, McDonald is saying, I'm not so worried about that because he's, they're becoming a party of.
of an ideology. The ideology is we're anti-austerity. Anti-austerity mm. is a meaningless tag. Of course everyone is anti-austerity. In an ideal world, anti-cutting services, no one with their right mind would oppose that. We but don't people, live in a real people world. People should be worried about the fact that, that, that Labour currently seems to, their policy is they want to borrow more than they actually have because that is terrifying because that means in other countries we won't, we won't be allowed to borrow money. We won't be allowed to operate with other countries. Mm. If, if that's our policy, they won't deal with us. Well, so people should actually be worried I, about I, I that. Think, but, but there's more distractions to come next week, aren't there? If we go to the I and the Independent yeah. as well, where there's a picture of the laid out dinner in the, in the Independent, and this is my um, the I spells it out more clearly, which is A, is he going to wear a white tie or not? This is Jeremy Corbyn. And B, is he going to confront Ch Chinese officials about their human this rights this, record this, this when my, the Queen is hosting a banquet for the Chinese yeah, this president? Is my, this is my point about, about Corbyn, is that Labour are now a protest party. They're a party of ideology rather than pragmatism. Now, the, the upside of that is they're able to take tackle issues of principle. So Corbyn was the first person to uh, really very publicly question mm. the Saudi Arabian decision to butcher a 17-year-old for simply mm. showing dissent. He has, in certain ways, driven that agenda very successfully. China has an appalling human yes. rights record. And because he's not responsible for our exports, because he's not responsible for actually how much money we bring in as a country, mm. he's perfectly <laughs> able to say, I think we should challenge them. The question of how embarrassing or otherwise it is to do it at a state it's banquet, irrelevant. I think it's Yes, However, yes. you're arguing that he is actually performing the role of yeah, Her Majesty's and, and, opposition quite in this very in that very niche area of ideology. Yes, the point. Yeah, this, Carol's and, point and, is that and he's, he's right, probably trusted no, to run the country. He's right about the Chinese human rights. Yeah. He's right to tackle them. But now, by saying he's going to, he's not going to get anywhere near these guys at the banquet. It's it's an it's an amateurish uh, strategy. If he just shut up about it and, and done it, it would have what would have made the news was that he confronted the Chinese president about uh, the human rights. Carol, Carol won't get near. The point that he that, that, that currently they're not a functioning no. opposition. No, and so it's, not, it's not about running they they, they, They're not even a functioning opposition. But that's my point I'm making. They're, they're, they are they are by voting in Corbyn. They are saying we are not worried about the pragmatism, the pragmatism of Blair, the part, the person that got him elected three times, the pragmatism <laughs> of making difficult decisions and holding people. To if they <laughs> really want to challenge the Tories on anything, they have to change. They have to be more credible. I want them to be able to challenge the, the Tories as a party as a united party, and the party is not united, it's not close to being united. And will never be united in, in this regard. If you look at Corbyn's performance at PMQs today, you know, the media establishments of Westminster sort of fall over itself to say, oh, is it a good or a bad thing? All that Corbyn is doing is standing there asking pre-planned questions to someone who can knock those questions back for forever. Cameron has built his political career on not answering a question and being glib. And having Corbyn sta it, standing there sort of awkwardly reading out a, a sort of question from someone else, not really pursuing it, having the inability to hold him to account, that's the thing you're talking the, about. The, 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 the clever thing we, about what Corbyn is doing there, I think, is that because he's reading out a question uh, from John in Huddersfield, Cameron cannot just dismiss it. He can't just say, I'm not going to talk yeah. about that. that. That is a clever strategy. We, we must move on. We've got lots of things to okay, talk about. Right. So let's talk about your paper, The Sun. Uh, one way, yeah. tickets to Calais, provided by this French uh, rail firm. It's, extraordinary, it's an extraordinary story. This, and it's effectively, the, the French rail firm, are, I think, are trying to respond to the problem that happens when, in the south of France, there are lots and lots of, of migrants coming in. They come into the station. What do they do? They don't have tickets. And what they've said to their staff is, you should be understanding, where, even if pushed, you should allow them a zero euro travel ticket. <laughs> and what effectively that means is France is transporting the issue from the south of France, where some of the migrants a landing uh, to Calais, where of course they can come in into this country. And the difficult question that, that that arises is that these people, very many of whom may be genuine refugees, mm. once they're in France, they are effectively seeking asylum from France. And when they then come to this country from France, they are not refugees from France. They are making yeah. a decision to become migrants to Britain. And the problem of, of France are having is they want, understandably, to, to disperse uh, migrants across a, a broader range. And that includes bringing them closer to Britain. Yeah. Is it, this is no different, I suppose, than, than Hungary hiring in coaches to bus people mm. across Hungary to get to Austria, is it? And then on to Germany. It's trying to disperse a huge, colossal problem. And it, it, you can't really blame them for doing it. To disperse it. or shift on? To shift on. And, and the actual answer to this, in the end, has got to be at some level 
level, the UN, if EU is incapable of doing it, which it probably is, to say we have this gigantic global problem. The solution has to be, as after the Second World War, a global solution of dispersing people to various different parts of the world where each person takes their fair share. And I think British people, there's a poll recently today saying we don't want more uh, refugees in. There was 60 percent of people said we shouldn't allow more refugees in the country. I think British people would say if we were taking a fair share and everyone else was taking it, I think that might shuffle yeah. just, just quickly, Tom Watson, we must try and pack as much in as mm. we can. Uh, in the Times, third MP uh, smeared in Watson witch hunt. Some might say there's actually a witch hunt now against Tom Watson himself, but, uh, but there we are. We'll Irony upon still. ironies, if yes. they would say that. I mean, the problem that, that, that has happened here, I think being generous to Tom Watson, he is a man who believes very fervently that child abuse should not be covered up. Clearly, the British establishment has a record of covering up abuse, a la Jimmy Savile, and he's perfectly right to fight against it. The danger that's happened is the pendulum in this difficult area has swung back too far the other way, and he is too bold in his claims. He's interfered too much in CPS uh, prosecutions and investigations, and he's led to innocent people in the, the form of Leon Britton, particularly, who was exonerated before he died. The police never told him. And so Tom Watson, in a certain way, despite even starting with good intentions has done a disservice to victims because now there's a suspicion about the people who are making the claims rather than the suspicion I, about I, the people I alleged the to have done it. the problem in the beginning was when he made the claims about Leon Britton and the police were investigating. That, that's one thing. The police are bound to investigate claims. However, when he knew that the police had no evidence and there was no case to answer against Leon Britton. He continued mm. to blacken his name, which I think is appalling, when he knew that. Um, and, and that's what I think is so wrong. And I think you can't be using parliamentary privileges the whole time to, to, to break stuff like this. Um, he seems to have bullied the authorities. I mean, why would the police allow themselves to be bullied by Tom Watson? They're the police, for goodness sake. They're, you know, they're the law. They shouldn't be bullied by... By a bloke like and he this. said, what else could I do? And the answer probably been, you could have passed this on to the authorities. You yes. didn't need to quite make such a show of it. And the suspicion is you made a show of it for political ends. And that yes. is an accusation yes. that is going to haunt Tom Watson it will. for okay. time to come. A uh, lot was still to come, including the very latest about the, uh, the NHS and difficulties there. And also, new advice to stand up to your parents-in-law, if that's what you need to do. Back in just a moment. <laughs> Well, welcome back to the Press Preview. We're taking a look through the newspapers. Joined tonight by the Sunday Mirror columnist Carol Malone and the Sun's managing editor, Stig Welcome I'm back. I'm keeping my eyebrows down. We're not yeah, allowed yes, to... Yes, I think We're not allowed to rant. <laughs> We've been uh, ranting, haven't we? Yeah. I'm not we sure, Carol, can off. you raise your eyebrows, Carol? Uh, shut you up. <laughs> Do you know what? It's my birthday today and he's been hideous oh, to me. Carol is, thir Carol, is. Carol is 39 today. Yes, he's been... See, there you go again. <laughs> yeah. And what are you laughing quite so hard at? <laughs> yeah, goodness <laughs> sake. Uh, uh, you're not 39? No. No, I'm not. We're anyway. not going to laugh at this story, are we? Let's Which is uh, a serious story about the NHS. It is, yes. In laughing. the Daily Mail, 13% of hospitals inadequate for safety, 61% require improvement, giving a, a total there. 74% are I deemed mean, unsafe, is, says the Mail. This is astonishing, you know. It's, uh, and as Stig said before, you know, after mid-staffs, we were promised that everything was going to change. We were told that, you know, this, this, uh, this culture of um, no care, no compassion, of sloppiness, of, you know, patients trying to drink water out of vases, all this was, this was all going to stop. And uh, we were told that NHS fat cats weren't going to be paid as much, that the money was going to go into hospital care. And it seems like nothing has changed. Not only has it not changed, it's got worse. I mean, this is shocking, 74%. It means that in every city in this country, People will be scared. Every city in town that the hospital they go into is mm. not up to scratch. And the Care Quality Commission said, there's a 120 page report, says they're inadequate. Mm. And we've still got people in corridors, sleeping in corridors overnight, on trolleys waiting to be seen. Yeah, and the specifics of this seem to be A, a shortage of nurses, just looking at the front yeah. page copy. Secondly, an inability to learn when things go wrong, unlike, for example, the aviation industry, which pours yes. over things. And then tries, but the other thing that Jeremy Hunt, the point he makes, and this is him trying to spin his way out of what is a very damning report, but what the report also does show is there are some trusts mm. that are performing outstandingly. Right. And so this notion that the NHS is running short of money entirely, that must be true for the trusts that are performing outstandingly. So one of the issues mm. with the NHS, and it's the great sort of postcode lottery that exists, is why can uh, one part of the country perform brilliantly and another part perform so badly? And I think one of the things they've got to try and get to the bottom of is, is the answer to that question, because nurses are leaving, 
doctors are leaving, there's no money. That is a problem that is a curse for the NHS as a whole. And yet within the NHS, there are pockets of things doing really well. Yeah. So clearly the next lesson from this is to try and <clears throat> learn the lessons of success as well as learning the lessons of failure. But there's only one lesson when, you, when, you, when you're, in, you're running a health service, and that's you look after your patients. That's first and foremost, and that's the, what's not happening. So that's, uh, not looking after patients isn't about money. That's about how you're doing the job and how you're performing the task. Mm. And as you say, if, if some trusts aren't losing money, how... Yeah. Uh, yeah, lots more she to do. She wants me to um, move on. I, I do. I'm, I'm going to shut up look, now. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Shut up, Carol. Shut up. Just say Not, shut up, yeah. Carol. Even, um, even on I'll your birthday, that. yeah. Yeah, on my birthday. In the, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Just, just let her ramble just on. Up. <laughs> yeah. Let her ramble on. She's getting old. Then bring a cake and a glass of champagne. Yeah. No, no. Um, okay. She's getting right, on at the top here, this is best for the kids. Yeah, now, this story, I think, is shocking. This is a runaway mum from Bradford, and she's taken her children... Um, and her husband and her kids are aged between 5 and 15 and she's bought a one-way ticket to Turkey and she says this is this is what I think what's best for my this kids. This is a text to a relative the paper says. Yes, a text, yes. I'm doing what is best for the kids. I'm doing what's best for the kids. Mm. Now, how can you live in this country with all its freedoms and everything it has and believe that taking your kids to Turkey and presumably on to wherever, to whatever war zone, how can you believe that that's best for your children? Mm. What kind of brainwashing is going on with people when they live in, in a country like Britain, democracy, freedom, everything, and you're going to take them to some, some war-torn area where they're very likely to be hurt mm. and brainwashed yep. and, and set to fight a war. I, f I find it astonishing. We tease a story we don't have time to talk about. Right. Um, to get on with your mother-in-law, you have to stand up to her. You'll have to read about that yourself on page three. Because <laughs> we've yeah. got to say happy birthday to Carol. Happy thank birthday. You. Um, sing it. You've sing stood, sing up, you've stood sing up well with enthusiasm. Happy birthday, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Kiss, 39 kiss, years kiss, old. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Okay, it's oh, yeah. me. Anyway, so now, <laughs> <laughs> my turn to raise my eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. At least you can. <laughs> the weather. <laughs> I've done it, weather. <laughs>